What's up, guys? You're listening to The Lifestyle Hub, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes and into the lives of inspiring individuals to not only educate, but unlock your true potential to live a healthy, active, and fulfilling life. I'm your host, Jason Grimmer. Now let's get this show on the road. What's up, guys? You are listening to another episode of the Lifestyle Hub podcast, and I am joined today by a very special guest. Dr. Seema Dalgandhi is a specialist obstetrician and gynecologist, member of the German Society of Obstetrics and Gynecology, graduating in 1994, practicing for 29 years, having built experience of the highest level. Dr. Seema's services cover the entire scope of pregnancy from preconception to labor and delivery to postnatal care. Throughout her 17 years of practice within the UAE, Dr. Seema has deservedly built a reputation not only for her expertise, but also for her professionalism, personal care, and dedication to her patients. We are very excited to welcome you on today. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me and your podcast. It's, Thank you. It's amazing, right? How have you been? How's things? I'm fine. It's everything fine. I have been living you know, 17 years in Dubai and um, I really like Dubai. I was always interested to, um, as you know me, I yes. like challenges yes. to come in new culture and new environment. Yes. And uh, through all the countries that I had uh, possibilities, I chose in Dubai. Yes. And I'm happy because I like sea and sun. Yes. And then uh, like the, the culture sun, is even different. Yeah. So just to paint the picture, guys, uh, Dr. Seema is one of my very, uh, very hardworking clients. And that's how I was very much fortunate to have met her. Because normally, I don't think I would have met you because I wouldn't have probably come to visit you, would I? Yeah. <laughs> because typically, you focus on what is it that you specialize in? Yeah, I, I'm i physician yes. and a doctor for obstetrics and gynecologist. Yes. Uh, obstetrics um, include pregnancy, even to getting pregnant before mm -hmm. infertility and uh, pregnancy follow up deliveries, different kind of delivery, C-section or normal delivery and uh, postpartum follow up. It yes. means uh, taking care after delivery. After delivery. And gynecologists include um, women care, like uh, all disease for women, it could be ovarian cysts, uh, uterus fibroid, or cancer as well. Okay. And uh, treatment of um, disease through medical, conservative, or even surgical. That means I'm doing surgeries as well. Yes. What was it that first, just to paint a little bit of a picture for people listening, what? how did you come into this field? So you obviously... You'd, you'd been educated, you were living in Germany at the time? You know, um, it's a good question because mm. as a teenager, I was, I think, 13, 14 years old. In a biology lesson, our teacher sh uh, showed us one movie about knee surgery and uh, arthroscopy, endoscopy of knee. And I was thinking, okay, knee is a very simple organ, only skin and bone. Yes. But I was amazed by arthroscopy to see how is the cross ligaments and liquid there, how precise only one knee working by moving. Okay. And I was interested for surgery. I wanted to be always surgeon. Wow. And I wanted to see inside of our body how the other organs working. And uh, I was reading uh, many books and watching movies about the physiology and how uh, the organs works. And later on, I was interested in delivery by babies because I was even amazed how could be from one cell become a baby yeah. and how you can give, uh, you know, birth to the one, um, you know, purse or one baby. Yes. And the co good combination was obstetric obstetrician and gynecologist okay. because in gynecology you have surgeries yes. and even um, obstetrics as an obstetrician I have even deliveries okay so that was like at that moment you thought that you wanted to go into that field yeah first surgeon and then after um, high school I moved to Germany Okay. And started, I finished college and medical school in Germany. Yes. And during my study, um, even I developed interest for uh, gynecology. Okay. That's why I combined surgery and the liberties The two together. together. Yeah. How long did it take you to, to go through your qualification education? So many people 
look at anyone studying to become obviously a doctor and realize that it takes a lot <laughs> of study, a lot of dedication, yeah. a lot of years. Exactly. It is long, really longest study. It's seven years, six, seven years medical school, basic, like GP. And after that, if you want to become specialist, you have to work five, six years in Germany like that. Mm -hmm. You have to do surgeries. You have to go through all the works. And then at the end, you have done a big exam for as a specialist. Okay. Like uh, together, let's say 12, 13 years wow. to become specialist. Yeah, it's, it's a long, long time. way. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, to just dedicate yourself to something for so long. Yeah, but you you have to be, you know, interested in. Yes. I believe if you are interested, it doesn't matter. You go through and um, doesn't matter if you are doing, you know, um, your study medicines or engineering or other field. You have to be interest or yes. interested and uh, you can do that as even as a long um, study okay. even it's very tough of course you, know, you, you know, need to have the passion behind it don't exactly. you exactly and i was wanted to be always you know doctor that's okay. why i'm happy and glad that i did it i mean it's reassuring because i feel like whenever i've been in for any procedures or anything like that as a patient you always feel worried you know, it, you're, it's a nerve wracking environment, but then you have to remember that this person has spent generally over 20 years, whether it be studying and then practicing. So you, you know what you're doing exactly, don't you? Yeah. After years, actually, you get used to it and you have experience. Yes. But, you know, by each patient, even surgery deliveries, I think about myself. If I was in this situation, of course, I, was, um, I would be even worried. I would be worried. And then what can I do the best to relax the patient? Yeah. And the patient always is saying, you have very relaxed method and then we, we feel comfortable. It, always you have to think if you have your sister or you as a patient mm. what would you expecting from doctor yes. and uh, with years you get experience you know you know the patient um, they are different of course you should adjust your treatment to the patient some patient they are very anxious, very anxious. You cannot discuss about surgery or something from the beginning. You have to start with really um, uh, in other way. Yes. Some patient very cool, yeah, no problem. Let's go to the point. Okay. That's why you have really adjust your treatment to the patient. That's why it helps my uh, help me to do history of patient to do conversation. How this uh, personality of patient to know them better to know what they're what they're doing so then yeah. so you'd gone through your your education and your studies over in germany and then you, from germany you came over to the uae yeah after 11 years working there yes and uh, i told you you um, i really like challenge yes uh, i wanted to try in other to work in other culture and to see how is the work in other countries um, and i came to dubai um because of um weather and then condition and even the culture was totally different than mm. German culture. But I'm happy. It was good experience to change the countries. Yes. You know? And I think, you know, it's obviously, you know, another challenge is an up and coming city. You've been able to build a lot of good relationships here. The medical grade of the UAE, do you feel like it's, start, it's improving? Have you seen it improve over the last 17 years? Very, you know, at the beginning, it was not... Um, I don't know if I can tell you now. A documentation was not really. We learned in Germany every single things that we are doing or we talk to patient uh, document as a docu documentation was very important. Okay. But here was the doctor. They didn't get used to it. You know, yeah. uh, even operation report. Wow. Uh, then I am so happy. Then came GCI and changing. Uh, they wanted to do standard in the world here, and now is even. A very good with documentation. They have to write everything and e-file. Everything will be documented. This improved a lot, mm. and even the doctors, a lot of um, specialists and consultant came to Dubai. Now it's improved a lot comparison to 17 years ago. I can imagine you've seen it change because now it has quite a good reputation. Yeah, a lot of people say it's not cheap, but 
it's very good standard. Exactly. That's really recommend if you have something. Even my, some of my patients, they said in other countries, they have to wait for surgeries, right. for procedures, two, three months or longer. Here you can have, uh, you know, immediately as your wish. I want to have... I, provide my patient to choose the date if it's better for the kids for the family and then uh, immediately i adjust myself to patient and even a lot of doctors doing the year you've it's, got the um, flexibility really good here. it makes a big difference yeah. so we're going to cover a few topics today obviously your your experience is very broad and the things that you deal with you cover a lot of areas but in particular i just wanted to focus initially to start with going down the process of like you know the the pregnancy road and how that looks i think i wanted to touch we'll go kind of in stages as the the process would begin so obviously yeah. a lot of the time um fertility people having issues conceiving and and with today's society being so full of stress yeah. sadly obesity and different you know situations that can hinder this process what is it that you quite often see people struggle with and yeah. what, do, what what do you tend to do to try to help people yeah. go through that process? Actually um, started with the getting pregnant, you yes. know, falling pregnant is very um, now in this uh, time is really a bit difficult because of many factors due to some factors like um, the women, they want to make career and then later on they think about pregnancy over 37, 38. I have a lot of patients, they start to think about pregnancy after this age. And then even immobility in our life, you know, we are sitting in not activities. Mm. Of course, obesity and stress, the main factor. And even by male factor is the same, like stress and uh, immobility could cause infertility and a spontaneous pregnancy is not um, so easy like before. Then my work started to diagnose why they don't get pregnant, the couples. You know, there are some tests, some diagnostic. And after they get pregnant, in very, very um, rare cases, like two, three person, uh, there is unexplained infertility. We don't find anything. I send them for IVF. Okay. But after they get pregnant, of course, is in the first trimester, in the first 12 weeks, three months. Yes. It's very important to take care because most of miscarriages are up to nine, 10 weeks. But up to nine. So yeah. anywhere between one to 10 weeks, this can yes, occur. Yes, exactly. After conception, you yes. know, they, they detect pregnancy then by missing period. Yes. And up to nine weeks, 10 weeks is very important um, stage of pregnancy yes. and um, miscarriage risk because of matching of uh, chromosomes wrongly. You know, it's sixty-five percent. The reason is only just matching, um, not perfect matching of chromosomes, Chromosome. and then the rest is uh, maternal uh, disease like diabetes, hypertension come, could come to miscarriage. Yes. Miscarriage risk is thirty percent. Wow. And then after 12 weeks, the organ building is finished, done. We say then starting with second trimester. Okay. First trimester is first three months. Second trimester is starting after 12 weeks that the organ building are, are done, finished. Done. And the baby grow in this way. But after 27, 26, 7 weeks, then the baby is really can survive if something happens. Okay, there's a lot Up more to 29 strong. weeks, then starting we after 29 weeks with the third trimester. Yes. Each trimester has own, you know, difficulties and uh, maybe complications. We have to do the test. Fortunately now is um, a lot of diagnostic we can prevent or early detection of some disease. Okay. And we can really treat in each can, trimester there are some problems and complications. Complications. Yeah. So, I mean, I think technology has come a long way now, hasn't it? So able yeah. for you to detect things earlier on. I wanted to just draw back to something you mentioned earlier. You'd mentioned that a lot of women these days are focusing on their careers. So that you're actually finding that unlike maybe years before where women were falling pregnant very early on yeah. now it's kind of on the opposite end of the scale exactly. what would would you say that there is because a lot of the times i'll talk to friends of mine and they'll say oh i'm nearly 35 you know, i need to have kids quickly etc is there an age 
that's optimal has that have those times changed are people able to have have children later and what do you think's the way around that i cannot generalize everything but depends on uh, fitness of body yeah. even i had patient with 44 years wow. or 46 spontaneous pregnancy wow. honestly it depends on fitness uh, genetic and even um, um you know other factors healthy lifestyle mm. i can say but the best or best time for the healthy eggs or young eggs it is less or around maximum 35, 35. if someone can get pregnant between you know as in a younger age up to 35 is younger eggs by okay. ladies but however really is uh, is different if someone has a healthy lifestyle and doing exercise and the um, healthy body could be healthy eggs as well okay. up to i'm saying 40 um, it's good age to get pregnant. Okay, so I mean, so that's a positive thought for anybody listening that feels like perhaps their time is running out. I think that's a good message to obviously yeah. pass on that you're looking after your quality of of your health and your fitness as well. the The process then for a lot of women would be because I, I get asked all of this a lot, and friends of mine go through this stage. Would it then be wise for somebody at that point who who doesn't potentially have a partner at that stage, but they're getting to that age? They, what options do they have to try to, you know, yeah. freezing? How does that all work? Very good question. Even the technique gonna help us today, because if they are, they don't have partner, they are not married, or they don't think about pregnancy right now, but they can exclude pregnancy in higher age or later on. Um, I provide them, or I do consultation with them. They have the option to go for egg freezing. Okay. And um, egg freezing is the procedure, not not surgery. It's not even, um, you know, very um, uh, invasive, invasive in that time. But they can um, make an egg freezing the young egg, in the young ages. Even five years later, if they decide to get pregnant wow. and they get married, they can um, make it from egg embryo and then make it IVF or the procedure IVF you can do with the frozen eggs yes and, and would they still carry that's how that would work yeah but you know some uh, sometimes from maybe 12 eggs that they um, stored maybe all of them are not good quality after yeah. the frozen the um, freezing okay. and some of them they damage still you have that's why you have uh, to freeze or anyone should, should freeze good number of eggs okay. because some of them they damage after the freezing but okay. embryo freezing even in other option the couples they are uh, married or they have partner they don't want to now to get pregnant yes they have option to freeze the embryo that means the sperm and egg they make it to embryo embryo freezing is much more safe they can uh -huh. survive better so in that case they've already met their match yes they They're just not ready to have a child at that point. Exactly. They want to really, they get married now, they think about uh, child or baby later. Yes. But uh, from the age aspect, it's better to make, uh, to go through this procedure and very freeze. Definitely. I think a lot of people now, because the cost of living is becoming so expensive, people are so much more focused on their careers. I think people are ending up more in this circumstance, aren't they? Where they're not sure if it's the right time to have children. They're wanting to know if they can wait and what their options are. Um, you mentioned IVF. I've heard different numbers on this. It's quite a common procedure globally or here in particular. It globally, uh, I told you, because of um, some factors that they make infertility very common. Yes. But here in Dubai, it's very common because okay. um, I don't know why, but even some of them, they want a gender selection. It's yes. allowed here. In some countries, it's, it's not, not allowed, allowed to do gender selection through IVF. Uh, so here you can have the choice to pick a boy choice or a girl. Choice make a boy or a girl. And wow. then even very common. I see more often than in Germany or other countries. Yeah. Interesting. And so we know that stress plays a lot of impact on the inability to, for, for the, the inability to be fertile etc are there other other than that the main common ones you'd mention exercise and diet would be the other two wouldn't it if people wanting to address things are supplements something and extra vitamins that come into play is there anything that from that side of like treatments or medical treatments that people yeah. can look into 
Honestly, I believe in uh, good nutrition, exercise, workout, and good sleep and lifestyle. If you have very uh, these three points and good healthy lifestyle, you don't mm. need a lot of supplements, I'm yes. honest, because um, you get through nutrition, a lot of stuff, okay, additional something like um, that your body need vitamins and magnesium and electrolyte you can take by your heavy exercise. Yes. But um, mainly I even recommend my patient first start by nutrition. Okay. It's very important. Healthy eating because, you know, it's very easy to uh, order the food, is, which is very common here. You know, outside food, is, you don't know how they cook, fast cooked or something. That's right. If you cook yourself... It's much more healthier. And of course, you like something you can cook for yourself. But unfortunately, at this point, because of busy, you know, lifestyle, uh, a lot of people, they eat outside the yes, food. it's very common. And um, I recommend start by nutrition. If somebody has good nutrition and then um, the rhythm in life, like sleeping a little bit earlier because our metabolism in the night goes down, a lot of people, they are awake until 2, 3, and they eat. And then during the day they sleep. It's not really healthy for the body. Yes. And then um, workout, exercise is very important because through um, cardio, even one point, for example, the heart rate changes and then pump the oxygen to the organs. Okay. All the organs, they get more oxygen and blood circulation. That's right. A uh, workout is very good and healthy. If someone has these really three points or taking care mm. and doesn't need a lot of supplements. I like that you look at it that way because I think that's the same when people come to me in the gym and they're like, what can I take protein, this and that. And you sometimes you just say, hey, focus on sleep, stress, nutrition and training. Exactly. And that will cover most bases. So it's yeah. similar in that case, guys. Yeah, by the way, even workout exercise take your stress from body. That's right. You know, good um, point. There are different ways to work out the stress. Some yes. patients say, I want to go kickboxing or uh, walking on the beach or, you know, and different way. You have to choose your way. Workout is different way. Not always. A lot of people, they say, already building muscles. Mm. No, but uh, they take a stress from body. That's right. Uh, yeah. Daily stress we have. Everyone has a stress. That's exactly. But to work out the stress is very important. That makes a lot of sense and that's very valuable advice. So we've gone through, let's say, we've covered a bit of the um, conceiving phase and then let's say, you know, we've gone through that phase. Like you mentioned, you go through the first trimester, which is generally the higher risk period. I want to kind of just go through each phase now, one by one, we'll go back and forward. But the, the, the way you should adapt in that first, or a woman would adapt in that first 12 weeks, does she need to change her lifestyle in any way to accommodate for that first 12 weeks, reduce training? Um, I mean, not, still go to work. How, like, obviously, it's, it's almost business as normal, right? Yeah, exactly. You should not really think that pregnancy has all changed the life and is different. Mm. But the, uh, it is very important to keep your routine. If someone has a healthy lifestyle, keep going, keep uh, continuing. But some of them, they don't have a healthy lifestyle. They should really, um, I take time really first consultation by pregnant patient the first time about the nutrition and workout. They should do workout because a pregnant patient, um, they have high risk and thrombosis, DVT, okay. because of hormones, the, the blood is a little bit thick and they get even through later on that uterus is big. And um, the flow from lower part of body from legs is obstructed. They have DVT risk. Um, it's very common during the pregnancy. It's very important that they do some exercise from the beginning. Yes. But again, adjusted to the trimester at the beginning because of miscarriage risk, very mild exercise. And then um, later on, they can do it more. Yes. After 12 weeks, they can do it uh, really a lot. And then third trimester, different exercise. That's when things change. But exercise, workout is very important for pregnant patients. Yeah. So I've worked with um, obstetricians in the past, back in Australia in particular. I haven't had as many clients here, but basically I'd have a lot of clients come to me. They would want to get in shape for their wedding. 
So a lot yeah. of females in particular. So I would see them, they would get in shape for their wedding. They would go off and get married and then we'd continue training. And then not usually not long after, after that, they would actually say to me, um, within my first 12 weeks, can we yeah. dial it down? So I, I'd done all my qualifications to become pre and postnatal qualified, obviously to work very closely with someone like you. So you would be giving me the information that's appropriate and I would just make sure they're looked after in the gym and they're doing the right movements. So for a lot of people that I would have, I'd actually go with them through those three trim trimesters mm. in the gym. Now, I think a lot of the time people, you'd get different opinions from different doctors, which I've experienced. Exactly. Some people almost panic and say, don't do anything. And they, exactly. they would come to me and I would say, hmm, a lot of the studies prove that, you know, if you've done nothing before and all of a sudden you bring on this high intensity training program, that can be a negative. Exactly. Would you say it's that's right? Correct, yeah. yeah. But I told you, if someone is uh, routinely get used to exercise, they should continue. But mm. some only just heavy exercise, yes. like weightlifting, squat. In the first trimester, maybe they should be to dial careful. It down. But swimming, for example, is from big enough pregnancy. It's yes. the best exercise even in gym we can yes. do a lot of option yes um, yeah that's right a lot. recommend from day one even before pregnancy before conception you've heard it here first so dr <laughs> Seymour is he's crediting exercise and i couldn't agree more i think going through the second trimester as you've started to adapt to how your body's changing you mm -hmm. can probably increase certain movements uh, things that focus on posture back and upper back exactly. muscles to prepare yourself yeah. for obviously you know during that time hormones will change right generally breast tissue will enlarge is that at that point where women will start to like notice like a change in their breast tissue or is that later on later on even the start and their stomach. because of hormones from the beginning but yes. second trimester because they're gaining more weight. weight and third is more obvious so posture is important posture to make sure is very important yeah. because most of patient after delivery they have back pain lower That's right. back pain even during pregnancy yes. because of posture and the you know a big tummy it's That's right. really um, the spine but how much does a stomach weigh on average for somebody stomach, i can't tell you but well, like the, the pregnant the patient <laughs> is recommend it's very good if they gain weight only 10 11 kgs okay. it's the best eh? but um, have you seen bigger numbers 50, oh my god 25 kilos wow. 30 kilos Oof. but very rare my patient listen to me yeah and <laughs> really, that would be because I they're work, and yeah pardon sorry Simon. that would be because they're generally eating mostly yes. of wrong nutrition okay. and um, that's why I work and I take care of um, nutrition and weight of patient yes. you know some I'm famous to say oh my god if I'm going to Dr. Seema today oh my I gain weight you know after holiday and after they that's good have guests they are a little bit I thought no I don't really um, punish you I we want to work and the good healthy pregnancy yes but my patient are really max 15 14 15 kilos, kilos max. only two three patients Always. you know sometimes There's exceptions hereditary or wrong nutrition yeah they that, gain weight too they much. gain weight <laughs> that way so so through the second trimester there'll be a bit more you know the training will be a bit more intensified or specific yeah um, that's generally when you would practice different like Kegel movements or core strengthening breathing, wouldn't you say, like to, to develop your pelvic floor as well? Yeah, not really. Pelvic floor is, uh, because of hormones, it's mm. not effective. After delivery, it's very important to That's work on pelvic would. floor. Okay. Yeah, but during um, pregnancy, it's very important to prevent or um, some complication like um, thrombosis, DVT, yes. or fitness that blood circulation to organs and uh, prevent gaining weight. Weight, this okay. is all, Even posture that you see. Yes. It's very important exercise goal uh, to keep them fit for delivery. Okay. So then we've got to the third trimester. That's when you would generally recommend they back off a little bit, right, from, yeah. from any strenuous activity. 
Yeah. Wouldn't you say? Depends on which week. If it's close to delivery for patients that they want to have normal delivery, yes. then they can intense the exercise. Okay. Like even sometimes long time walking and squat or something ah. or sitting at the ball. Depends on, you know, if the baby is mature. After 36, 37 weeks, the baby is mature. Can, even if uh, the patient deliver, it is okay. Yes. Then I intense the exercise like um, sitting, squat, and walking to keep the baby down a little bit ah, to bring the, the head down for yes. normal delivery. Yes. So I think obviously the one thing to take away from Dr. Simo is what she's saying is a lot of this is case by case. Each week you'll check in with the, with the patient how the baby is and then you will advise, you know, how they should proceed. Yeah. Nobody's ever the same, right? Exactly. Yeah. Always I'm saying you have to tailor the dress for each one different. Yes. You cannot, you know, medicine will be very easy if you have one recipe for everyone it's not working like that mm. you have to listen to patient they need and then the strain and everything the patient are different and you adjust the treatment to the patient okay makes a lot of sense i want to talk about now we've got to we've gone through our journey and we're at the end of the of the third trimester and then you would have discussed this prior with the patient but our pregnancy delivery options there are a few what is it that you specialize in? What do you recommend? What's most common? How does that work? Exactly. This is one question and everyone asking, is normal delivery better or C-section? I'm saying I can't tell you. If someone has answer, it's not correct because you have to see how big is the baby. Okay. You know, I measure in ultrasound. And uh, if the big baby over four kilos and the lady at the head, uh, is not engaging up to 39 weeks. Most probably it's better to go for C-section because there's some complication like shoulder dystocia. But if the baby is average good and uh, is um, head engagement after 38, I recommend, of course, for the normal delivery. Okay. You have to decide around 38 weeks, yes. um, measure the baby and uh, fitness uh, complication by the pregnancy is very important. If someone has gestational diabetes during pregnancy or hypertension, mm. you cannot wait, wait until estimated due date. Mm. You can't go over the estimated due date. That's why there are factors that you decide by each patient if a normal delivery better for a patient or a good option is C-section. Makes sense. Does the, you, you would have people that come to you early on and say, I want a C-section, right? <laughs> I, I know I've spoken to a lot of people and they, they literally a have lot. said, when I go to have a baby, I'm only having a C-section. Do you ever try to talk those people into the multiple options or do you just say, okay, no problem? How does that work? Yeah. And uh, this really a lot of patients are coming from the six, seven weeks at the beginning. Yeah. I want to see section. Yeah, yeah. I thought it's too early. Let's first go to the second trimester to see if the baby is fine. And then uh, around 36, 37 weeks, yeah. I try to give the option, you know, from medical aspect, you can deliver normal. Oh, that's good. But if if they don't want i cannot force them of course have some complication yeah for normal delivery you should go through risk as well it could be very smooth could be some complication but with experience you can manage all of them yes it's um, a mother and baby healthy is my goal you know and you can with experience um, know your limit now is time uh, to end of um, delivery, you know, yes. through C-section. Or you can still go ahead to normal delivery. Yes, it's. I try to get them information, both options. But mm. sometimes the patient, they don't want, they, they don't choose want already. Yeah. So um, when that case does come, you know, and then you go through that procedure, you're, this is just a little bit of a behind the scenes, but you're usually met with, you know, you're on standby, aren't you, for a lot of that time to when it, because obviously nobody really knows. Mm -hmm. um, so then you'll go through that process with the person and the the type of delivery, will it impact, you know, breastfeeding, the mother's ability to bond with the baby? Is there any sort of pros and cons to, to natural and C-section? 
Um, by both, now um, we have this option, even by C-section, to give the baby immediately. Even if I'm still under surgery at the side, wow. and the baby can go to mother. And in many cases, we started with breastfeeding by C-section. Very interesting. Wow. But uh, of course, by normal delivery, uh, the, the baby can go directly skin to skin. And by C-section, maybe first uh, the pediatrician check the baby. If it's fine, bring to mother. It's not big, big different. But okay. of course, by normal delivery, it's more intense, the uh, contact baby and mother. Yes. I think that was a, that's something that a lot of people seem to have had questions about. Whether, whether or not there was any difference in that. Water births and things, things like that. What are your thoughts on that? Is that a common yeah. procedure here? I had a friend in Australia who went through that. Yeah, we had in Germany many, but you know, uh, here is very difficult. You should love the water. You should relax in water. Mm. You should even um, don't be hesitant if there is blood in water and some lady they don't like. And good team should be because in water, warm water, maybe the ladies collapse. You should be able, oh. good team to bring it from a water, this heavy body to out and then immediately check the baby if it's a uh, baby fine, you know. Yes. It's not so easy that if a lot of people they say, but water birth is good for the third delivery, second delivery, um, without any help like IV, uh, syntocinone and IV medicines or epidural. With epidural, you can't yeah. go to the water to the or water. do a normal delivery uh, and water birth. That's Sorry. actually a good point that you brought up there. Multiple pregnancies. Do you often see, what's the most common thing with the second or third pregnancy? Will, women tend to go through the same process, i.e. if they've been natural on their first, they'll go natural second and third, or sometimes they'll change? Yeah, usually we say is if someone delivered normal, the second one will be faster and easier because oh. the tissue already one time it's dilated, it's yes. softer. Yes. Not that like first pregnancy is tight, you know. Yes. But there is... Depends on position of a baby, a position of, you know, the umbilical cord and heart rate of baby. I had even by third pregnancy C-section after two normal delivery mm -hmm. because heart rate of baby went down and you, we didn't know what is the reason behind, but you cannot go for the risk to continue normal delivery and the baby suffering, you know. Yes. And, it depends on a lot of factors, but usually by second and third pregnancy uh, or delivery, it's faster. We're okay. expecting to be faster because the tissue is softer. Yeah, so I think that's, it's very interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of people go through that process multiple times. Twins, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm gonna say touch wood, like I would love to have twins. I mean, obviously I wouldn't be delivering them, so I don't know what yeah. that's like. Do you see that, is that quite common? It, does that change the game when it comes to the delivery? Yeah. Um, through IVF, uh, we experience more now uh, twins and mm. it's more common than previous. But uh, however, it's even hereditary um, uh, and genetic. But by twins, twins, they have even uh, some other risks like um, the common placenta, if they have common placenta, one baby get more um, blood, oh, blood and yeah. then other one less. Then the babies are different. Mm. It's fetal, uh, fetal uh, transfusion. One baby get less blood, one more. And then this risky is this big one that the heart getting, you know, by babies. Anyway, they are different in weight. And the, there is one complication. Another complication is um, premature delivery because they have no space and the uh -huh. contract uterus contraction start uterine contraction earlier. They could be um, premature delivery or um, cervical incompetency, the cervix, lower part of uterus, uh, keep the pregnancy 40 weeks or all the time. Okay. And by twins, the pressure is down, is earlier shortening and even again premature oh. um, delivery. Yes. They have some risks okay. and uterus rupture, a lot of other risks 
But um, a lot of patients, they want to have twins. They said one time, two is easier for us. Yeah. But we don't really recommend to make it twins. If it's happened, happens. But yes. not really, you shouldn't make it um, with help to get twins. Yeah. So it, it so basically a lot of this is again like you're saying it's case by case and the risks are literally case by case. There's not it, the most important thing is everyone being aware of all the things that could go well, that could be complications, and then you just managing them as you go, right? Yeah. Um, so that why that's why that bond with you and and obviously your patients is so important. Yeah. Because you're really judging everything as it comes. You know what I like, even there is a um, difference between Germany work and here in Germany, we had the doctors that are working in the hospital, they do hus uh, surgery and deliveries. And the doctors in the clinic, they're taking care of pregnancy. Mm. And uh, we, I was working in a hospital always, and then we didn't know the patient for delivery. But advantage here, I know my patient. Yeah. I know the risk of my patient and I can deliver them better, you know, because I know how far I can go for the risk by this patient um, because the condition is different. That's right. Yes, it's very important to know the patient and follow all the pregnancy. It's important to give uh, safety for the birth. Yeah, I think you also know the, the mindset and the mental ability of, of certain patients, don't you? As you get to know them, who you can push a little bit more or encourage to be a bit stronger, the ones that you know might start to hesitate, you can manage, right? I think that's very important. Exactly. Some patients, the pain level is very low. They get only just by a little bit, you know, pain they find as a, wow, very mm. bad pain. Of course, I decide for the epidural anesthesia earlier. Yes. And the patient, they don't really, the pain tolerance is very high. Yes. They, they make difference. Of As course. I told you, individually, it's very important to know the patient and make difference. Of course. The um, the process where, you know, what, what, what do you often see is like a positive example or for the husband or for the, for the partner, I should say, going through this process? Do you see, you know, does the, the partner spend time in the same room? Is that, or do a lot of partners spend time outside of the room? What do you find is the most, or what's been the most supportive, you know, position for, for the partner of um, the, uh, the spouse giving birth? Actually, we encourage the husband to yes. be by the delivery. It doesn't matter if a C-section or normal delivery there because the feeling that the baby coming, they cry sometimes, even yeah. the husband. They have a good feeling like, um, you know, the baby is born. It's happiness, action. It's yes. not, you know, like... Um, then we encourage to be there. Some husbands, they are so scared, mm. but at the end they say, I'm happy that I was there. Okay. Even by C-section, they can be present in the operation theater. Okay. Because uh, C-section we are doing in spinal anesthesia. The patient is awake, the husband support all the time, uh, yes. his wife and the upper part, and then is of course curtain to, yes. to be a sterile um, son. But um, always they support uh, the wife and it's good for the patient for it's the wife yeah. and even for the man they have a good experience to say um yeah it's it's really good to um, be by the delivery it doesn't matter if it's normal or a c-section there yeah i think that's a great point i think that's a lot of things a lot of people often feel like they're a bit not sure if they can be in there but i feel like when what the woman's going through i think the <laughs> least we can do is actually just be in the room and by I experience, but I experience even sometimes that the husband, you know, collapse and then yeah, they fainted. Oh, and by no. the, but anyway, something else to worry about. Happen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had to take care of husband and the patient both. Uh, but it's that's of matter. course. It's I mean, it's again. Very, very there's happen. a lot of emotions and a lot of pressure. Exactly. And speaking of this, I wanted to just go now. As I think we've explained and covered that that journey quite well actually but i want to just go in a little bit more detail and and into what people might not realize but a lot of the pressure that you know is also put on the medical team and doctors in your case and, and surgeons in this process and i wanted you to just give us a bit of an insight because i think i when i first met you and you told me well, when we spoke in the gym and how comfortable and casual you you tell me, I was I was going through this process for a couple of hours, and I'm just standing there thinking, how are you focused, controlled, contr managing a room, holding a baby, 
comforting a mother, et cetera, for time and time on mm. end. And you've done this now for so many years. Mm. Talk to me a little bit about handling that pressure. Um, obviously, sometimes you're on, you're on call like this. You know, you don't know what's happening and you have to be ready. Exactly. Talk to me a bit about the process that goes on for you behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, at the beginning, if you have not enough experience, you are nervous. You know, I remember in the first, in Germany, we had to stay in a hospital. Even we had a room for sleep. But in the beginning, uh, I was not able to sleep mm. deeply because I was waiting all the time if it's happened something. But by the year and experience, you could be in deep sleep. But if the, your phone call and then ringing, you say, okay, patient is under the labor and going to deliver, you're going to run and then very uh, comfortable. I mean, it's stress, enorm stress sometimes, you know, mm. because it's emergency. In emergency case, if um, here in Dubai, you are not always in a hospital. I try to stay with my patients since the beginning yes. because if something happened, complication under the labor, I can manage because I am there. But, uh, you know, uh, sometimes it's norm stress they call you and you have to from this point run to hospital by the traffic in Dubai. I know, it's not <laughs> and, easy, is it always? Uh, but, uh, you know, by the year mm. you will be more calm and what helped me, honestly, uh, is work out again. Mm. I was always active um, in um, high school, school, always I did exercise or I was in volleyball team, handball team and later on even I did all this exercise. With exercise or workout, you will, um, you know, uh, don't make a big stress for yourself. That's they right. say, okay, I can manage, you know, be strong. And then uh, it's behind each delivery. Mm. It's a lot of action. Yes. But uh, you get by the experience, by the years, and healthy body, we say, if it's the f you are fit physically, it's really you can think better. Yes. You will be fit in mind as well. Yes. And then, um, yeah, anyway, manageable. You in manage 29 it. years, I know. fortunately, as nothing happened. Of course. <laughs> and how, I could know, manage everything. Do you know how many you've delivered? It's, I stopped counting. Yeah, I mean, I, I can I, imagine. In Germany, it's they the had a system, they counted, I think, about um, 3,000 in Germany, and here, most probably 2,000, 5,000. Minimum, what? I had delivery, C section or normal that delivery. That is incredible. Or vacuum ventos delivery. That is all. absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I found you very inspiring. That's why I asked you to come on because I think another thing that people, obviously you can tell by Seema's arms that she trains yeah. out. She works out quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> and she's very professional. <laughs> you're very professional here, but when you're in the gym, you're like very down to earth and you're ready to train and you're very positive, which I think, you know, I was, I've, I was saying I would, I would definitely want my, my partner to be seeing you going through this process because I felt very reassured around you and I'm not yeah. even I'm not even pregnant so, <laughs> so that's always a good thought but, uh, <laughs> but I think I think exercise has given you a big outlet hasn't it to be able to deal with the strenuous physicality of your job because there's the there's the pressure and then there's the quick response mm -hmm. but I think just talk to me a little bit about actually physically you're in the room at that moment mm -hmm. where there's a lot of pressure, a lot of nerves and, and whatnot. You have to take charge. Talk to me how, how that is so important for you to obviously look after your, your well-being. Yeah, you know, um, not only deliveries, but uh, our challenges sometimes by uh, surgeries. Uh, I remember one time, eight hours, we should work wow. and the uh, uterine fibroid, 14 uh, myoma fibroids should be removed through laparoscopy keyhole surgery. And then these six, seven hours to standing and with shoulder is really fitness oh helped me to don't feel any bad feeling after surgery, mm. not back pain, not shoulder pain. Yes. You know, it really helps fitness physical fitness to uh, have a good outcome after long surgeries, long deliveries, you recover very quickly from uh, this stress or um, yes. this physically, you know, physical um, pressure on That's your body. Right. That's right, it is. And I think there's been a few times where you're like, I have a delivery later this week. We'll do lower body today so <laughs> that your arms are, are not tired or anything. So 
you, it is something you have to think about, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I said, Jason, today, not arms, because I have today, <laughs> tomorrow surgery. That's right. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah you, I have to, you know, actually, if you get used to, and even after workout, you don't have muscle soreness, it's mm. okay. But of course, we prepare ourselves, or I try to keep my body so fit that I go, you know, um, Su- su- I do successful surgeries That's and right. deliveries. You, we take care a little bit of body, yeah, but you take a lot actually, of care. I've been um, exercising for a long, long you time. Have. It's not affect my body with soreness or pain no. or something. Do you know without without throwing any of your colleagues under the bus? Would you say the general doctor or surgeon in Dubai is of a similar athletic condition to you, or do you think? Unfortunately, the majority are probably not in the best condition. Uh, I can't really say about a lot of doctors, but what I see in our conferences, yes. you know, um, a lot of doctors, unfortunately, in my field, they are not so fit. The body it doesn't show so fit. Yes. And they, if you recommend a patient to be fit and do exercise, and you should be as a role model. Yeah? That's right. You say, okay, I do, and I feel this benefit. You can do it the same. But mm. unfortunately, not all the doctors take time for themselves to do workout, exercise. And you don't have fit. much time. You don't. Because yeah. us trying to find two a week is hard with, with your schedule. Yeah. But you prioritize. Yeah. Because a lot of people use time as an excuse. Yeah, exactly. But you made that very clear that you wanted two times a week. You also do wake surfing. Yeah, exactly. Once a wake week, surfing. which you're very good at actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're looking at it. adding in some Pilates. Yeah. So you're, you've are you prioritized to keep yourself in shape, which is obviously yeah. a very, very and impressive thing. And some cardio as well. And yes, some cardio, <laughs> which I have assigned some extra cardio. That's yeah. right. Yes, but it's you important. Know, as you say, this is excuse. Mm. You know, honestly, after work, a lot of people come home, say, I'm tired. And then they sit at the TV and then they eat. But if they go only just half an hour for workout, they are more fit. Than That's right. If, honestly, the feeling that I have after long day working and then the feeling that I relax after exercise that a lot of people should experience. It's yeah. very good. You feel lighter and stress gone from your body. Yes. Um, yeah, that's it's why important. it's excuse I don't have time. Yes, it they is can, an excuse. They can find the time. It is an excuse. And because obviously, you know, like you said, you lead by example for your patients. And a lot of them now you're very close friends with still years and years after they've had their, their children, aren't you? In a lot of cases, you you keep that bond with them. It, that's because of the process that you've taken them through. Yeah, exactly. This is um, to that point. I can tell one uh, very good um, story. Uh, one nurse, previous nurse, and she organized um, a surprise, you know, birthday for me, and all the patient. Not all of them, mostly that mm. they delivered the kids. They were now four oh, years wow. old, six years old. She invited and they were singing happy birthday. And I didn't believe that this baby I delivered now is six years, four years. Wow. And uh, we still, I still have contact and bonding with some patient. Uh, Very special. It's like, yeah, they follow because it's good system here. The patient are coming before pregnancy, during pregnancy, after delivery for annual gynae checkup yes. and all the checkup. And over the years, we know each other. That's right. So that's obviously something else we didn't speak on much today. And it's another very big area of Dr. Seema's skill is you will do the, the or anything to do with gynecology, which would be frequent checkups. So you, you keep that, that connection with your patients all the way through, exactly. which is great. I try even um, if long time I... I don't hear from them, only reminder, come uh, to them. And it's, it's, it's works that we keep, you know, contact with a the patient. They are yes. happy. And then um, I'm even happy that they are in good health. Yes. If I, after years, um, I see them and I hear, okay, they're taking care of us. It's really happiness for me as well. Yeah. And yeah. I think you can see, you can obviously hear your passion and that's why you've been in this field for so long, which yeah. is absolutely incredible. So I wanted to lead to the, to the, to the lifestyle hub golden question, which is a question that I ask to yeah. every guest that comes on. And it is, what do you think the key 
is to living a happy and fulfilling lifestyle? Um, the key is um, you should really accept the reality. Don't plan for the future and don't think what you could do it better. Mm. Now you can, right now, think what you can do uh, to make your uh, life better. Yes. And uh, even forget the age. I really age is only just number. Mm. You can make the best things with happiness. What do you happy i tell patient if you don't like gym go for the other workout do it something yes. you know what you like and passionate to it do it yes. and then um forget a stress we can't really prevent avoid but yes. uh, try to work out the stress and then choose the job that you like yeah you know? that's a good one uh, because we spend eight nine hours sometimes longer in our job and even you, your mm. job is in it really. If you don't like, if we don't like, it's tiring. It That's makes right. us frustrated. And if you love your job, you will be happy. Yeah. First, That's you know, good. choose what advice. you like in life. Yes. Um, and then try to work out the stress and then um, spend time because our time is always the social media. Um, I like to spend time with my friends' social life. You yes. know, to yeah, you uh, do find time for that, don't you? Yeah, to spend time to work. It's just, it's make keep me happy. Mm. Fitness first, and then love my job, and then I don't really I don't care about the f far away future. The future. Do you, uh, do you think that's a lot of the reason why you're always very? I mean, you're very positive. I feel like you're very positive yeah. and upbeat and very vibrant. Do you think that's a lot of because of your training, you manage your stress well, you don't look too far in the future, enjoy the moment? Do you think that has a lot to do yeah, with it? Definitely. Because uh, if, you know, I have to cancel my workout some for a long time or my coach cancels, yes, yes. <laughs> and I get a little bit, um, you know, frustrated, depressed, you know, like, mm the body doesn't work even i'm such a person if i have a lot of i'm busy a lot of work i'm saying okay let's do it this work today i go for workout tomorrow i need someone and you know uh, to push me and then it affect my life you yes. know you get more you know like sad and depressed and uh, exercise workout give me more it energy makes, gives you the energy yeah and i that's why i'm positive and always i have energy I think that's an amazing way to conclude today's episode. I think we've covered some really interesting topics. Dr. Seema, thank you so much for coming on and being very informative. Thank you to give me the opportunity of to course, talk. Of course, it's my talk, pleasure. You know, my experience with the, yeah, with the life and fitness and my job. It's my pleasure. And like I said, you're very inspiring. And I think for a lot of listeners, hopefully you would be inspired by Dr. Seema. If somebody wanted to reach out to you or to find out where to visit you, where about, can you just tell me a little bit about where you're based in Dubai, yeah, how exactly. they can contact you? Yeah, um, I'm in the clinic, Bedaya Poli Clinic, based there. I do consultation and see the patient there, but I take them for delivery um, and surgeries to different hospitals, but mainly King's College Hospital right now. Okay. Emirates Hospital and Zara was in the past, but it always um, I have two, three hospitals that the patient they can choose. But um, okay. Bedaya Polyclinic is my base. Is your base? I'm full time there. Okay, you know? I'll put the details in the in the description below so that if anyone is looking, they'll be able to contact you via you know your channels. Um, because I'm sure there will be. Um, I even basically, after today, I'm like, I need to talk to, to Vix to be like, hey, maybe you should go see Seema. Like, I think she's a good person to just, <laughs> just I'll feel more relaxed. <laughs> so we're going to have a chat to her about that. She actually, because when I first came up to putting this podcast together, she really wanted you to come on. Yeah, I, I, of course, did. But she was like, yeah, please bring Dr. Seema because I'd like to ask her lots of questions. Yeah, and unfortunately, she's traveling. She's been away for three weeks. Yeah. So she was so upset that she actually didn't get to sit in today because she oh. wanted to sit with me and ask oh, you some questions ask, yeah. so but, it's okay next time maybe down the line anyway we can have another one yeah another one or she can come even to the clinic That's i right. take really time for patients yes you know i don't um check the time like other some doctors yes your time is over if they have question even i provide my whatsapp 
yes. uh, to the patient. Yeah, if good. they have emergency cases, they should call me. Yes. If some question, of course, I can't really answer immediately, of but course. they can contact me anytime. Yeah, you're always there. So you heard it here first. Dr. Seema, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure. And to, guys, that wraps up our episode for today with Dr. Seema. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I'll have all the links below where you can find today's episode. So please don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow. And we will see you next time. Alrighty, guys. Lastly, before we go, I do have a quick favor to ask you. If you're enjoying the Lifestyle Hub podcast episodes, please take a moment to firstly give us any feedback, subscribe, like, and share. If you have any questions or any topics in particular that you would like to hear, please let us know in the comments below. Um, please make sure you turn on post notifications so that you can be notified as soon as the episodes are released, which is every single Monday. I mean, it's our focus to try to get that to you every single week. Thank you so much for listening in. This is the Lifestyle Hub podcast. I'm your host, Jason Grimmer. Until next time, catch you later.